having seen the rainwater harvesting and different methods of conserving water we still have a small part as to how water can be conserved and that is through small dams as well as large dams okay but let us first see the small dams now and here are the types of small dams that we have we have check dams see here is the picture of the check dam they are very very small actually this is a small dam is constructed just in a very very small area where you have a flow of water and you are stopping the flow of water so there is a reduction in the speed of water as well as reducing the soil erosion so those are the basic things about these small dams and here is the check dam that's also a small dam and it is all built in by man made and it's made of concrete or sometimes just sandbags and it's called a check dam and then you have micro hydro and mini hydro these things literally this is a bigger version but this micro hydro and mini will be micro hydro and mini hydro are smaller types of the same thing what happens is water just flows from a higher level to a lower level and power is generated okay so hydroelectric a uh, process is happening there and then you have the small dam and this is called the overflow dam or weir okay so this is also a type where the water is stored for future use so wherever water is collected see here also water is collected here also water is collected and it is passed by through the sluices here also it is overflowing but then there is a certain amount of water there and you have these hydroelectric dams smaller versions of that are what is micro hydro and mini hydro now these are the different types and then you have if the water flows during the rainy season what happens water just starts flowing and and different uh, pathways of water are just brought in and mainly what happens is power is generated through the flow from a higher region to a lower region when water falls you can generate power through that so it's a dual thing that happens here so these are the different types of small dams now let us go to the differences let us see the differences between three things that is micro hydro because they sound similar but there are certain differences here mini hydel and you have small dams okay these are the three types and there are differences in the three types okay the difference is actually lies in the amount of power that is generated and that can reach how many homes see these things are in the remote areas of mountainous places okay it's not hilly regions so the amount of power that generated definitely means a lot sometimes the power can be so much that they can actually sell it to the national grid that is also possible okay now going to micro hydro this is the first one okay now coming to the differences between micro hydro mini hydro and small dams these can generate a power up to from 5 kilowatts to 100 kilowatts okay and mini hydro can generate from 100 kilowatts to 1 megawatt and small dams can generate from 1 megawatt to 10 megawatts what does this mean they can power so many homes actually this one can power 5 to 100 homes are powered by micro hydro okay when you come to mini hydro it's slightly a bigger one compared to micro hydro so this can power 100 to 1000 homes and small dams 1000 to 10000 homes so this is the difference between the three types 
फाइव टू हंड्रेड हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड एंड थाउजेंड टू टेन थाउजेंड होम्स स्टिल समटाइम्स इफ द वाटर इज वाटर फ्लो इज रियली गुड देन वट हैपन्स दे कैन सेल दैट एक्स्ट्रा करंट टू द नेशनल ग्रिड ऑल्सो ओके सो दैट इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ माइक्रो हाइड्रो मिनी हाइड्रो एंड स्मॉल डैम्स नाउ वी शुड नो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ दीज स्मॉल डैम्स हियर इज द रन ऑफ वाटर दिस ऑल्सो डज द सेम थिंग रन ऑफ अ रिवर ओके सो the basic thing here is whatever runs off from the river is converted into hydroelectric power that's what happens here so it just falls on a turbine and it keeps moving so that's how these things work okay now we'll go to the advantages of these small dams see the expense that it involves just from the picture you can understand this must be incurring a lot of expense this must be taking a lot but then when you come to this building this constructing this is very very simple okay so very simple to construct very easy okay and when it is very easy to construct the cost also is very less okay so very less cost compared to the large dams this cost is very less okay and then what happens it reduces the velocity of the water therefore it prevents siltation so what happens see when siltation is prevented all the sand and the soil and the earth that comes along with the water that is just washed along with the water that that soil becomes very fertile for agriculture for irrigation okay so soil is fertile wherever you have small dams supplying water all that area will be having fertile soil okay and then it is also eco friendly in the sense see when you need to build a large dam you need to remove so many things so animals will go plants will go trees will go everything has to be cut down but here it's in a smaller area so nothing is affected so it is eco friendly so it does not affect anything so the fish is there the aquatic organisms are there the plants and the trees everything is there intact so it is eco friendly also okay but there are some disadvantages of these small dams how much can do you think can a small dam hold the water amount of water that it holds is very less isn't it so what happens it becomes seasonal so when it is raining it's overflowing but then in the summer you can see the bed of the pond or the reservoir okay so it is seasonal so does not give water throughout the year okay so that is a one disadvantage because of that you can't rely on this it is not reliable supposing you plant some crops and you need water for it you can't depend or rely on the small dams for the supply of water throughout the crop till it is getting harvested so that is another that is the problem here and because these is small the storage capacity is also small so do you think it can supply water to larger areas no it can't okay so irrigation of larger land or acres not possible with small dams but otherwise it's a friendly thing for the small farmers who are on the sides or banks of the shores of the rivers but then these are the disadvantages that we have now let's move on to the large dams from the word large something that is very big actually what we do in the large dams is you have a range of mountains that bring in water you'll see waterfalls in every mountain here and there you can see waterfalls and all these water fall down so what happens there is only one place where from there it flows down that place you build a wall a wall is built here see here the wall is built <clears throat> that's the only place through which the water can be let out all other places are the inlets of water so that's how the water comes in but then that's the only wall that is built 
that's become that becomes a dam it's made of sluices and it also on the sides of the dam you have something called penstocks these are called penstocks okay so these penstocks through this also the water is let out in the corners of these sluices you have these penstocks through which water is let out at great pressure from high from a height it is coming down so that is how these hydroelectric power is generated okay so this water hydro and it is getting converted into electric energy at these penstocks okay so this these large dams they incur a lot of expenses okay the cost is high okay then whenever you need to build a large dam see there will be many many villages small villages and pockets of people who will be living in those areas now what we have to do we have to relocate okay so relocation okay so we have to relocate them see for years and years together they have been in a place can you imagine you would go and telling them hey we are going to build a dam here you are supposed to move from this place you have to go to another place it's not easy for them right so it is pretty difficult some of them will be owning acres and acres of land in that area now they have to leave everything just let it go and then they have to go to another place so that relocating is really difficult then there is loss of biodiversity see in areas where there is water and there is dense forest there is a lot of shrubs and trees and animals and birds that are present there and there are migratory birds and there are so many other kinds of varieties of living organisms that dwell there now what happens when you have to build a some some structure you have to cut down all the trees so that becomes a huge loss on the biodiversity okay so that's one more thing that happens then you, of course there are many advantages for these large dams see it is ultimately collected here actually this is the sluice through which water is coming out but on the other side of it you have a whole big reservoir okay there is a reservoir filled with water so during rainy season water is filled this reservoir gets filled with water and that water is made available throughout the year so even when it is very dry even when there is no rain at all for certain months of the year this water is enough so what happens from time to time these sluices are let open and water is sent out so there is water throughout the year water is available throughout the year for some some of the crops we need water throughout the year you have seen paddy fields where water will be there stagnant throughout they need a lot of water okay sugar cane these are cash crops that we really need a lot of water and here this water is available so cash crops thrive well means they grow well okay so there is no problem at all what if there is no rain what if there is no water what if it everything becomes dry that point is never there okay so people actually this advantage is for the rich farmers who own acres and acres of land and they have these cash crops that's being cultivated in their lands and they are really benefited by these large dams okay and uh, so on, on uh, these are the advantages and the disadvantages of the large dams so having compared having seen the small dams as well as the large dams both of them have advantages and they have disadvantages also but then there is something that's common to both what is that it is conservation of water it is we know that it's a precious resource and both of them strive towards the same thing what are they doing this is also collecting water that's also storing water so conservation of water is there for both okay and because of that there is a lot of agricultural growth so there is growth in agriculture and there is conservation of water so there is no problem in that area so that's the 
advantage of both small dams and large dams now we will if you like it you could like or share or subscribe to this channel and the next video don't miss because we are going to go into the next part of the wastewater recycling bye bye till then